it's insanity to think that in five years we're going to go combustion engineless, like even 10 years. I think about the amount of cars that are on the fucking road. People are just going to switch over. <laughs> think of the dead batteries. So you, where are all the batteries going to go afterwards? Well, this is this is what the again, battery industry like. Again, they're, they're lying. The goal is not to make it so that all the ve- like it's not like they want to take every vehicle that's on the road right now and every one that will be and replace it with an electric one. That's not the goal. They want to eliminate private car ownership completely. And by pushing these electric vehicles through, they're going to achieve that because you're either not going to be able to afford one or you're not going to be able to afford the repairs when yours inevitably breaks down because it costs $30,000 and will likely cost closer to forty dollars or $50,000 know, in the next 10 years to replace a fucking battery. And then on top of that, those resources are already strained. For fuck's sakes, like, this is a side note. It didn't get a lot of international attention. But Zimbabwe, who's a large exporter of lithium, is basically nationalizing the industry. They're not going to export the raw material anymore. They're going to, you know, make their own batteries. Why are they doing that? Because they, because they, the, the supply is so short and the value of it's so great. And if they, you know, were able to convert that lithium into their own batteries, they would make a lot more. They, basically, they're losing bil- uh, billions and billions of dollars a year by just exporting raw lithium. Like uh, all of this stuff has has pressures on it, and we just ignore it. That's the crazy part about this is like there's no plan here. When Stephen Gilbo comes out here and says, "Yeah, we're going electric by 2030 or 2035," there's no l- realistic plan to make that happen. It's not. There's no transition plan to make it feasible. It's just this is what we're doing, and if it fails, then it fails. Like it, there, there's no way they're going to make it actually work. And nobody, if they, nobody's they thought it through. Like it's it, gonna be fucked if that's the case. Like, oh, your car breaks down. Sorry, it says you have to buy an electric one now. What? what if they had the ability to make this work, like if they had a real plan, we would know what it is. They don't have a plan, guys. And like ultimately, I mean, I say they don't have a plan. They do have a plan. The plan is to literally destroy Canada's economy to the point where it's it's in such disrepair that the only option is to you know basically insert massive government you know complete government control over it complete centralized econ- uh, you know uh planning for the economy we're going to decide everything what every resource is used for that's that's where this heads towards and i think everybody here knows that but you know why can't why can't and again why can't pierre paulier talk about this he gets up there and he said, and I like, look, I know the answer guys before people, you jump down my throats. I know the answer is because he's probably in on it. Okay. I understand that. But what I, I'm making this argument to, to any of the CPC bros out there that are listening, or if this finds them in the ether, why can't he talk about these things in the terms that I'm talking about them in right now? Do I sound crazy? Is what I'm saying off base? It, does it not make sense? Like, these are criticisms that could easily be leveled at the Liberals in the House of Commons, and the CPC is too fucking cowardly to do it. They can't do it because they're fucking afraid of being called conspiracy theorists, which is, you know, it just shows how fucked and weak they are. That they can't, they're, they're too afraid that the media is going to make fun of them for actually standing up for Canadians. So that's why they lose, because they're, they're shit at what they do.